Welcome back to my channel for a Leica video, which is the last firmware update video I'm doing on this particular weekend because Leica issued in the last few days new firmware for the SL2, for the SL2S, for all the M10 rangefinder cameras and also for the Q2 cameras. And that's what this video is all about. I have three different Q2 cameras here on my table. I have the standard Q2, I have the James Bond limited edition and I have the Leica Q2 monochrome and all of these cameras also got an update in the same time window as the SL2, the SL2S and the M10 rangefinder cameras. So we are going to install it, we are going to explore it and clearly I will live demonstrate all the differences between the former version and the new version and for this I kept the standard Q2 on the version we had before and I will update the 007 Q2 to the new firmware as well as the monochrome so we can have a comparison between the differences and get a glimpse into all the new features. Let's get started. I'm going to start with updating the James Bond limited special edition. You see the 007 engraved here and we'll get the new firmware onto this Leica Q2 camera. Then I do the same for the Q2 monochrome and then I will come back, share all the new features which you find in the release notes on the website from Leica and then we look in a live demonstration into all these new features. Here are the release notes as you can download them from the website from Leica on the Q2 and on the Q2 monochrome and the features are exactly the same which we get and the ones I want to cover here in a live demonstration is a new exposure metering method, I want to talk about intelligent dynamic range, I want to also talk about extended image properties which is a nice feature for JPEGs and I will not cover the other properties because they are self-explanatory. So for instance, firmware update via Leica Photos is something you might appreciate or not appreciate. You can do it still via the SD card or you go via a connection to your iPhone and use the Leica Photos app. Or in playback mode, sorting will occur strictly by recording date. That's not a lot to demo about. Bluetooth connection is optimized. Geotagging via the Leica Photos app is possible. These type of things, they are not really something I wanna cover. And I will quickly at the end show the video formats which have been extended to. All right, let's kick this off. Let's start with the standard Q2. Let's go here into camera information, which is just here at the bottom. We have still firmware 3.0, so that's in the way we intended it to do. Let's go to the 007 version. If we go into here, we have camera information firmware 4.0, which is correct. That's the new one with the new features we want to explore. And on the monochrome, we have, let's go into there, camera information. We have 2.0 and actually that's also the firmware version which you get if you download the firmware but the release notes from Leica at this point in time or at the point in time when I'm doing this video is talking about 3.0. So if you are seeing this don't get confused the new firmware for the Q2 monochrome is actually 2.0 and not 3.0 I guess in a few days Leica will have corrected the typo in the release notes for the Q2 mono firmware. For exploring the new features coming with firmware 4.0 and here with 2.0, let's start with the, in my opinion, coolest new feature and that's highlight weighted metering. Let's have a look into the former firmware. So if I go here to the status screen, we have metering here and then we have spot, we have center weighted and we have multi-field. And I had this for the time being on center weighted. If we do the same on firmware 4.0 for the Q2 special edition here, we have here now four options. We have spot, we have center weighted, we have highlight weighted, and we have multi-field. And that is pretty cool, which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. Let's quickly look into the Q2 mono. We should have the same options here. So we go into the metering, we have spot, center, we have highlight weighted, and we have multi-field. So let's look into what that means and what you can do with it. Let's go here into metering, and let's first of all choose here center weighted, 
Let's take a shot of the scene in front of us. Very good. Let's change now from center weighted to highlight weighted metering and let's take the same shot. If we compare now the two different metering methods, here is center weighted and you see the LEDs at my wall here in the studio. They are overblown and if there is more highlight elevated in the scene, there might also some clipping kicking in. And if you do highlight weighted metering, it's optimizing the metering on the scene in front of the camera for the highlights, which in this case are the LED lights at my wall here. And the color representation and in general the way these LEDs are now represented in the scene is under highlight weighted metering much better than under center weighted metering. And the same applies if you would go for multi-field versus highlight weighted metering. It would just become a much better image in terms of highlight representation if you choose highlight weighted metering. Let's swap the 007 version with the mono version and let's have a look into the mono version how this is playing out. So here we have now center weighted chosen. Let's do this. Everything is in black and white of course. Taking the shot, going back to metering, changing this to highlight weighted, taking the same shot and now comparing the two images. So let's go here into play. And then this is highlight weighted, this is center weighted. And clearly you don't see the color representation here, but you see also here how the overall frame is darker under highlight weighted and the lights appear clear in terms of their structure, not in terms of their color, of course. Whereas here it's overblown and clearly highlight weighted metering is the superior method to go if you have highlights in parts of the scenes because you will then have an underexposure in the rest of the scene, which means exposure to the left. But that can be easily corrected in post. You can get information back out of shadows in post processing based on the high dynamic range of these camera sensors in the Leica Q2 cameras. In order not to confuse ourselves, let's swap the cameras. So we have the 007 version again in the middle of the scene. All right, the next feature I want to explore concerns only JPEGs. And uh, if we go into firmware 3.0 and we go into the menu, we cross to page number two, come to JPEG settings. And if we go into that, we have here the JPEG resolution, first of all, and the color management. And then we have the film style. And on the film style, you can also edit them. And you go here into settings. And then in settings, you have a menu which is very much simplified. So you can, for instance, choose here low, medium, low, standard, medium, high, high for contrast for sharpness and for saturation. Let's have a look now how this plays out in the new firmware. So let's take firmware 4.0 and then we go into the same menu. So let's scroll here quickly into JPEG settings. And then we have here again, resolution, color management, film style. And if we go now to film style settings, we get a completely new layout. So let's have a look. If I want, for instance, to edit my standard film style setting, I can go in here and get now a more graphical representation. So I can choose here between contrast, highlight, shadow, sharpness and saturation. So we have two more parameters to tweak. And if for instance, I wanna go for highlight, I can now with a push on the joystick to the right hand side, start to tweak this between minus two and plus two. And then I can confirm and then this is set up. Quite nice and I think in the graphical representation, how Leica is doing this looks really nice to me and suits the Q2 cameras very well. The next new feature is IDR and IDR stands for Intelligent Dynamic Range. And if you go to firmware 3.0 to page number two in the menu, we have photo file format, JPEG settings, which we just explored. Then we have scene mode. And if we go now into the new firmware 4.0, we start also with photo file format, then the JPEG settings just explored. And then before scene mode, we have IDR. And IDR is, as I said, intelligent dynamic range and you can set this to auto so the camera decides whether it wants to enhance for instance information in shadows you can choose high standard low and off and this is a setting which only affects jpegs and is not affecting raw images whereas if you go for a different metering method like i showed before here on highlight weighted that of course affects your raw images as well as your jpeg images but idr is only for jpegs and clearly by the nature of the name enhances your dynamic range so you get better treatment of highlights and better treatment of shadows. Of course we get intelligent dynamic range now also on the Q2 monochrome. So here on page number two you have JPEG settings and then before digital zoom you actually have IDR which is the same options I showed before 
on the 007 Q2. So you have auto high, standard, low and off. And since this is only affecting JPEGs, I think it's safe to use it and to test the algorithm implemented on the Q2, how it actually is increasing dynamic range. So improvements on shadows and highlights for the JPEGs. And then you might want to imitate that for your post-processing and the raw images, which are the ones, at least for me, that really count. The last point to mention are the new video formats. I checked them. These tables are exactly the same on the release notes for the Q2 and the Q2 monochrome. And it's just something you can experiment with and try out yourself. And then for the sake of completeness, one item I didn't mention when we went through the list of updates in the release notes, and that's data management extensions. So folder numbers can now be created up to 999. And the image numbering is extended to 9999. I hope you liked that short video about the new firmware 4.0 for the Q2 and 2.0 for the Q2 monochrome. For me, clearly the most valuable feature is highlight weighted metering. That's why I also mentioned it as the first new feature, but all the updates we get on these Q2 cameras are really valuable and are really meaningful. And Leica has a great history in from time to time upgrading their cameras, no matter whether it's a rangefinder or an SL2 or SL2S or the Q cameras and incorporating new features and just making already excellent cameras even better. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There is always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. And of course, peace out.